Tom. Thank you all for being here. Uh, we're really excited about getting home to play. Um, we're excited about homecoming, and we're excited about playing the first ever American Conference football game at Charlotte. And we have great respect for the Naval Academy for on so many levels, um, uh, you know, on a human level, on a personal level, and um, uh, and certainly on a football level. You know, they had a big win last week over North Texas, and they are who you think they are. You know, they're the Naval Academy. They um, highly disciplined, tough as nails play like there's no scoreboard. They don't care if they're winning by 50 or losing by 50. Um, and uh, they're actually, I have to say, as a football guy, they are just absolutely fun to watch. So uh, Brian's done a great job there. Um, they're back on track, and we're expecting a really, um, we'll get the best from them and a very tough game. Well, it was kind of a combination. I'll let Oz talk about what they, uh, what the defense did, but I wanted to give the kids some rest because, um, you know, we played five night games in a row, and I've that's a lot. I don't, I don't recall that um, happening much, and three of those were away, so we got you know big games away, so we would get home four o'clock in the morning. And the kids were tired. I know I was tired. Um, coaches were tired. Kids were tired. So I want to get them some rest, uh, physical rest, but also some emotional and spiritual and mental rest. So we gave them three days off, practice for two, three days off. And uh, we're able to heal up some injuries and just get them, get them away, get them away. And um, I think we got done what we wanted for the bye week. Oz? Yeah, so um, it started with efficiency reports based on, you know, down and distance field zone, you know, first and second, one to six, second and seven plus, third and short, which is one to two, three to six, seven to 11, and then 12 plus. Uh, myself and the support staff doing a good job trying to figure out our, our deficiencies in some of those areas. Um, you look at third down, for example, I mean, offenses have a 58%. Um, you know, win percentage against us on third and three to six, which is crazy. It was one of the worst in the country. But on third and one to two or seven plus, we're actually pretty efficient. Um, so finding out things, though it may not pertain to this week's game because of who the offense is and who we're playing, um, we still have uh, six other games after that that we got to get ready for, which the offenses will be very similar to things we've already seen. So um, trying to look critically at what we've done, where we can get better. You know, before last week's game, you know, we led – uh, led the AAC in missed tackles at 67. So, you know, cleaning those up. I mean, if we eliminated half of those missed tackles in the Florida game or even the SMU game, I think the results are going to be much different, you know, especially in the Maryland game, right? Week two, you saw that, especially in the fourth quarter. So uh, being critical of who we are as a defense, um, the play calling, um, not so much, you know, the calls itself, but the, the player's ability to execute the call. Um, and then on top of that, obviously, getting ready for Navy. We know what Navy is. Uh, their offensive coordinator is new. came from Kennesaw State. Um, so we didn't do a lot of Navy prep over the summer, but throughout the year, basically, we'd break the game down every Sunday after they played um, and just start to look in and build and sort of put this offense into buckets because a lot of things are based off personnel and formations and really formation distribution and motions. So how do I, how do I find the best way to teach our um, defense, their offense? That's really what defense is, right? You're sort of teaching the – um, the defenders, the guys that are playing for you, really the offense and how they're structured and how they're or organized. And this offense is no different. I mean, this is, like Biff said, this is the most disciplined team we'll play. I mean, there's three teams in the country that um, consistently, con consist excuse me, consistently um, have the least amount of penalties. And that's just the, it's the first notion of a disciplined team. And it's Army, it's Navy, and it's Air Force, right? So um, obviously – getting the plan together, and then uh, this week really finalizing the plan. We had two good days, I thought, last week, and um, now we're on to uh, game week. Yesterday was a good practice. Got to keep stacking practices, and we'll be ready to go on Saturday. Mike? Uh, Coach Poggi, the message to the players after the two days of practice and the three-day break that you gave them before you guys got back, what what'd you, what'd you say to the guys? Did you, we're talking about getting away and clearing their minds and, and – what was, what was your overall message and what, what they should be doing over those three 
You mean after the two days of practice? Yeah. Um, get away. Take care of your schoolwork. Take care of your body. Uh, if you can get home, you know, if it's possible to get home, get home. Um, but, you know, separate from this. It's a bye. Bye weeks are hard to handle. They're very hard to handle when you when you have a loss, you know, when, you, when the bye week comes following a loss. So um, w what we know is this. Football is a combination of things. And the first thing is it is it is mental and emotional. And, you know, when you lose four games in a row, those those mental and emotional um, pillars start to get strained. And so you have to approach the coaching aspect somewhat as a, um, not only as a football coach, but also as a counselor, right? You got to keep their heads in the right spot. You got to know when to push and when to pull off. And I think we're pretty good at that. And I think we got what we needed out of that. And I think the kid, I can tell you the kids came back. Uh, we had our best lift of the year Monday when they came back. And, uh, and, and yesterday's practice was really, really good. I think I think it came at a great time, right? great great time. Coach, I do want to ask you about quarterback again. We saw Jalen and Trexler at SMU. Uh, how do you see that battle kind of playing out moving forward? Um, I knew you'd ask that. Uh, it, it's it is what it, it is what it is. We're going to play two. Um, I have confidence in both guys. Um, you know, both guys do certain things well, and and and. And need to work on other things, but we're going to kind of uh, we're going to mix it up. Think it's hard to prepare for, uh, and then call what they do well, right? So um, I'm going to stick stick to our guns on that. And that's kind of a situation where you just ride the hot hand. Yeah, and also like who gives you an advantage of who you're playing, right? Like you know, if you're playing like a incredibly athletic defense you know you want to be able to get out of bad situations so um if you're playing a defense that's really going to you know put a bunch of guys in the line of scrimmage and you know force you to throw the ball then maybe 11 is a better guy to do that with but they both do things that i'm pleased with and i and i am pleased with both of them <coughs> Um, as a whole, I feel like, you know, we, we've been a little inconsistent, but I also feel like the bye week helped us clear our heads and get better as players. Um, we had uh, time to get in the, in the film room and watch more film with, with our coach, Coach Froelich, uh, being able to identify different things and get our eyes better. So I think now we're fresh and, and we're refreshed mentally, and now it's, it's time to, you know, pay attention to the details. And, and we've started doing that yesterday. I want to add something to that. So one of the things the coaches did this week that was really great, and Ryan, had, Ryan and his staff did it on defense and Mike and his staff did it on offense. We looked at all these key factors, right? Like, um, you know, what, what do you have to do to be successful? And so offensively, speaking about the running backs room, you know, we looked at tackles for losses and sacks. And by position – not only by position, but by player, how many, you know, of those were were from the running backs or how many of those were from the offensive line or other positions. And what came out of that is that, like, the running back room, we got to do a lot better job in, in uh, you know, running the right holes uh, and not inflicting, you know, self-inflicted tackle for losses. And then we got to do a better job in protection. Because the running backs have been responsible for about a third of the sacks, and and so we focused on that. And this, did you learn any of that stuff this week? Yes, sir. Good. All right. Andrew, for a big while, uh, going against a team like Navy that runs a triple option, what kind of goes into that for you? Not thinking too much during a play and just being able to play, knowing what's coming. <clears throat> um, I honestly say just you know playing hard. You know, listening to what Coach Oz has been teaching us since last week, and even before that, just doing our job to the best of our ability. Coach Oz, sorry for the double question here, but mm. a, um, how hard is it to sort of, I would 
always say sort of you almost have to unlearn everything you know about how to play defense when you get ready to play one of these offenses. Yeah. Uh, how did you sort of handle that? And then B, what do you? What are some of the different techniques you used uh, to help get this defense ready for this kind of offense? For instance, I know when, when I was in college, we actually didn't have the quarterback take an exchange. He already had the ball to kind of speed it up. So was there anything like that you used to, to prepare for this week? Yeah, so I'll start with that question first. So we don't use a ball, you know, because the, the whole idea, it's triple option, is three elements, is a dive, a quarterback, a pitch. And sort of what Wall said, I've asked these guys to do a job. Not anything more, not anything less. We've got enough players, good enough players on this team that at all three levels that can make an impact impact our defense in, in a positive way. And I think if you have the dive, take the dive. You have the quarterback, take the quarterback. If you have the pitch, take the pitch. Now, obviously, easier said than done. They do a great job with uh, perimeter blocking, either Xing the block, which means like the crack replace, and then putting their A back on the corner. Um, they'll do different things where they're pulling guards, they're looping the tackles versus veer releasing. So there's some things that they'll do that we have to adjust to. But um, this sort of follows up on your first question. There's nothing that you unlearn. I think good defense is built off four things, pursuit, tackling, block destruction, and takeaways. Um, and that's the things that we've preached since I got here on January 20th, I think that was the day. So, you know, if we can continue to do that, and I think everyone in this room have seen us play good, good drives, good quarters, good halves. We just haven't played a good game yet, you know. And um, I expect Saturday to be that, that first four-quarter game that we play well. And we play to those four sort of uh, bullet points, you know, pursuit, tackling, takeaways, and, um, and block destruction. Hunter, uh, <clears throat> with the two coaches, I want to ask you guys about Nakai Hill Green. Uh, obviously, you're both with them at Michigan. Uh, goes back to your uh, St. Francis days, Coach Bochy. Uh, just what, what have you guys seen him grow from, obviously, a high schooler to now, uh, Paris Charlotte? I saw what you take there. Yeah, so um, obviously I met Nakai in 2021 at Michigan. You know, he played uh, um, you know, Will linebacker for us, weak side linebacker, did a really good job for us. Obviously uh, was a big part of the uh, the turnaround, I guess you could say, defensively for that team. I mean, we had a lot of really good players, but he was definitely a big factor in, in to us having a really good defense that year and winning the Big Ten. Um, you know, obviously last year I was with Baltimore. He was at Michigan, so I wasn't really sure what was going on at Michigan at the time with him. But um, obviously we were really excited when he decided to come join us here. I think what Nakai gives you is is a leadership ability, but also um, just the experience level. I mean, he's a, he's a very cerebral player. He has a high football IQ, a lot higher than even a lot of the guys that we brought in or inherited on this team. I mean, just he he's really about ball, you know, and uh, I can appreciate that. Um, you know, I don't have the, the personal relationship that Biff does with him, so there's a different um, relationship between how I, me and Nakai talk versus how Biff and him talk. Um, but I think we both respect each other enough that there is a common goal. We have 12 opportunities. We have seven left. Um, and I know he's going to give everything that he can and he's going to do whatever I ask him to do to get the job done. And I can appreciate that. And I think he expects the same and knows that I'll do the same on my end. So um, I've appreciated him being here. Obviously, I'm excited for the next seven games. Um, to see him uh, continue to grow and be a big part of our defense. And um, I think you've seen him show out in a lot of opportunities, you know, and I think um, as fans, but also as us as on the stage as coaches, we know <coughs> we expect him to do the same thing week in and week out. So um, Saturday, 2 p.m., he'll, he'll put on another show for us. Uh, really proud of him. He has grown a lot. Um, you know, he didn't even start for us at St. Francis. And, um, and he just keeps plugging away and then wound up, you know, going to Michigan, becoming a starter in 21. Um, Nakai is a great leader, and he's reliable. He shows up every day to everything he does, to his graduate classes, to his demeanor, to practice, to preparation. He's just – he's kind of like the perfect player to coach – uh, no real high highs, no real low lows. He's just approaches it in a, a really great way. I think he's been really important to the football team, and he's getting more and more important every day. So he'll be really critical on Saturday. Mike? For, uh, <coughs> excuse me, on the left here. Yeah. Joe Sheen. Joe Sheen, I didn't want to say it wrong. Uh, we've talked about how 
different the Navy offense is with the defensive side? What are you seeing with the Navy defense and how you guys can, you know, the impact that you're looking to make? Right. Um, I think the Navy defense, they have a very unique defense. Um, they like to disrupt the line of scrimmage a lot and bring pressure from, from the field and from the boundary at times. So we're looking to exploit them downhill. Um, they're not very great uh, tacklers in, on, the, on the back end. And um, I feel like uh, they're, they're very disciplined. So our physicality has to outmatch their physicality. Uh, so, yeah, this week um, the staff has talked to us a lot about in the running back room staying in for protection this week. Um, so we're working a lot on, on establishing and watching a lot of the blitzes and um, kind of figuring out how can we best help the O-line and ourselves not get the quarterback uh, hit. And um, we've watched a lot of the, the previous film from the previous games and took some, of, some, some good things and learned from our bad uh, habits. And, and we're improving now on our bad habits to become better this Saturday. Yeah, I'm okay with everything about the ta except the tackling, but <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Hunter, uh, I want to ask, based off what Coach Oz said earlier, you feel like you guys have played good drives, quarters even halves. Mm -hmm. What do you think needs to happen to take that next step to play that full, complete game on defense this Saturday? Everybody doing their job. That's just the reality. Consistently. Coach Bojay, I want to ask you about injury report. I know you said you guys had time to get healthy, but any injuries to report? Um, we are uh, pretty healthy. Um, there's a couple that are out. Uh, Julius is out. Um, and Durrell won't play this week. Uh, but pretty much I think everybody else is ready to roll. Yeah, great question. Um, well, I think um, from the day that I got here, the first meeting, our first defensive meeting was February 6th. And um, I think there's, um, there's an opportunity. You only have one of them now as a coach. Okay? And this is just what I believe in. There's an opportunity that you have in front of a group of individuals. And in that day, let's say there was 45 guys in the room, same sit seats that you're sitting in. I have one opportunity to make a first impression on these guys. Sort of let them know how I roll, the things I believe in. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a vision, right? And a vision is just a shared understanding of, of what I believe good defense to be. I think from that day, I think, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, I think um, everyone would tell you that, that that standard has not changed. And it can't change. It's just the game is too hard. Defense is too hard. There's too many rules against defense. There's a lot of things that are – that are just, I mean, defense is hard. You got to adjust to everything. You know how that goes. I mean, it's just, you watch any game on Saturdays or Sundays, and a lot of times it's the defense misaligning or knowing someone busting a coverage or a gap's not fitted properly. It's just a hard, it's a hard side of the ball to coach and play. It just is because of what John said. Guys just have to do their job. It's 11 guys working as one, right? Consistency in your daily performance, right? Do your habits reflect your mission? I mean, there's so many cliche things you can say, but it really plays to defense. Um, with Yabi and with players that I believe in, I am harder than anyone else. But I'm hard on myself, too. And I think the reason being is, and uh, me and Biff had this conversation, but I expect a lot of these guys because I expect a lot of myself. And I think it's, it's like anything else. If I'm going to hold you to a standard on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, well, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it can't be any different. You know? No, that's not, that's not always the easiest. It's not always easiest for me because, um, like anything else, I mean, it's, it's, it's a mental strain. This game is more mental than anything else. I mean, and... Uh, you expect things out of people, especially players that you believe in. And um, intrinsically, not all these guys are built and wired the same way. They're just not. But we have a group of guys on defense that I can, I can honestly say that are built the right way. And intrinsically, they're motivated to want to get to a certain place in their life. And this game be, be the way to propel them to that. So if that's your mindset and that's what you believe, 
And I can see that. And I can see that your daily habits and the things that you do, you talked about Nakai, right? You talked about Yabi in the question. Those guys are built a little bit different. So I expect a lot more out of them than I may someone else. And uh, that being said, I am harder on them, and I, I press them. Because on Saturdays when the bullets are flying, they need to be able to breathe in, breathe out, calm, cool, collected, and go and play, and play hard, and play to our standard. And uh, if you do that Monday through Friday, Saturdays become a breeze. If all of a sudden on Saturdays you start yelling and MFing people, at the end of the day, nothing gets accomplished. So how can you make it as chaotic and, and hard on Monday through Friday? So Saturdays, those guys can go out there and do what they do, do what they were born with, right? God-given traits. And uh, that's what makes the job fun, but it, it's stressful in that, in that way. But uh, that's just what I believe in and what we'll keep doing defensively. Yeah, I, mean, I think you'd have to ask them. I mean, my opinion of myself is uh, much different than other people's opinions of me, I guess, you know. Maybe besides my mother's. Um, we, we, we probably both think I'm a good person. And, uh, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I think um, I think I talked to Biff about this. I mean, you know, we're one and four, okay? And, and defensively, we put a lot of pressure on us for being one and four. And uh, we know there's a lot of things. Football is not a one-sided game. It's all three phases. It's complementary. It's things that we've talked about and the things I think are going to ultimately make this program what we all want it to be because of what we believe in. But I do think that defensively you have the ability to, um, to, create, to create a standard. Um, and if you live by that and you go every day and attack that, um, you give your team an opportunity to win every Saturday. I really believe that. You, know? you can score 50 points a game. That's well. I mean – Someone's got to get a stop somewhere, you know? So um, to be critical of myself, how do I think it's going from the February 6th meeting? Um, I think we're right on track. And I know that's probably not what you want to hear because we're one and four. But defensively, we've shown progress in areas. Our biggest issues now are self-inflicted. We have to eliminate, um, we have to eliminate misalignments. We have to eliminate um, the missed tackles, you know, out of our four losses, we have not went back on Sundays and said, we have a bunch of MEs. Like, guys aren't, like, busting things. It's guys are in positions to make plays, and they don't make the play. And uh, so it's my job to get them in a better position to make the play, right? And uh, long-winded answer, but I would tell you that I think we're on track to where we want to be. And for the next seven games, um, that's all we're, we're allotted right now until we get bowl eligible. But for the next seven games, we're going uh, to be ready to roll. Uh, on that side of the ball, I can tell you that those guys are going to be playing with their hair on fire. Yeah, I have a question for Coach Poji and Vanga. Navy ranks third in the country right now with fumbles recovered. You know, you talked about pass protection and hitting the right holes, but can you talk about keeping control of the ball and keeping possession of that ball and making sure that they don't uh, capitalize off those turnovers too? Um, the ball is everything. The ball is the program, and um, the coaches harp on us every day on keep punching the chin and keeping the ball high and tight. And we work on drills. But, you know, when you get on that field, it's all mental. So one of our, our biggest keys this week will be to, you know, double the ball when you're in trouble, when there's traffic, and don't put the ball on the ground. That was well said. Hunter, uh, this is for all four of you guys. Uh, homecoming game Saturday. It's a sellout crowd. First game at home in a few weeks. What are you guys looking forward to most uh, getting out there? Start with, start with Big Will uh, for me, I'll probably say the energy. You know, our fans, they, they hype us up. You know, I definitely felt that the first game. And then, you know, for me, and I'm sure as everybody else, the plan doesn't change. We got to play hard. We got to play physical. We got to do our job. And in the end, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, the two home games we've had so far, um, been pleasantly surprised, to be quite honest with you. Based on my experiences in places that I've been, I wasn't really sure the environment and what this place was going to give us. I mean, you know, it's a program for going on the 11th season, right? I mean, no one really knows about Charlotte from, from a big picture standpoint prior to um, probably just a couple of years ago. I mean, there's been, a, there's been a lot of buzz this season, though the results haven't been what we wanted. The fans have shown out the last two home games, right, the first two we had. It's been awesome to see. I mean, uh, sometimes I'm so tunnel-visioned that I don't really realize, but uh, – 
I know on the other side of the field, man, those guys were rocking. Uh, it's a great environment. Um, I know the friends and family I've had at the games have loved it, so I expect the same thing on Saturday. Uh, I'm just looking forward to go out there and playing with my teammates, playing hard, and coming out with a win. It's great to be back home. Um, and I agree with 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 Ryan and and Wall. You know, um, it's a, it's a it's a great environment here, and it'll be, I would imagine, standing room only for the Naval Academy. Um, I would just say this: like two o'clock on Saturday. October, fall, you know, the United States of America, where else would you rather be at 2 o'clock, right? Watching, you know, Naval Academy coming in to play your home team, Charlotte, in the first American conference game ever played in, in this stadium. So I think it's really exciting. I love our fans. I think that the, our fans are loyal. Our students are lunatics. Uh, which I love, and, you know, it's it's going to be great. I'm so happy we don't have to get on buses and planes, and um, it'll be really good for us to be home. Do we have any other questions for these guys? Coach Childs, any chance we see the cutoff coming out this season? No. <laughs> What's that? That's not my cutoff. <laughs> Cutoff's not my, my – Oh, favorite. did you ask guys for cut? I gave him one. He has yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah were, but... they were team issued, and then uh, – I found out I wouldn't be fine if I didn't put it on, so I decided not to put it on. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you.